Welcome back everybody to the object oriented programming course using Java. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to a couple of syntax things in Java, the Java programming language. So you, you are aware of, of different syntactical differences between Java and C++. So let's get to it. Uh, as you see, I'm in my tool called Replit and I already have my profile picked up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this plus sign here and I'm going to click on Java and then I'll just type in lecture 01 and I'm going to create my replit. So I mentioned the different parts of the program. We know that the system dot out dot print line hello world that is going to be your C out command as we did in, in C++. Okay. And a couple of things that I did want to show you. So let's start with variable declarations. Now I want to show you something real, which you're probably used to. Remember, as I mentioned before, by putting in the main function here, you're making this your main program and, and that's perfectly fine. I usually like putting this as public and we'll talk about the access modifiers in the later lectures. But I get into the habit if you have a main program make it a public class and then whatever your class name is so as discussed we're gonna get rid of this and we're gonna talk about the different data types available in Java you have a boolean and we can assign a name to it so we'll just call it BLN first now if you see it underlined in Java it tells you that this data types not being used but this is a one byte data type and it's sim it's the same as in C++ it's what we call a primitive data type now when I talk about primitive data type I mean that the area of memory where it's stored is a different location than where objects will be stored and we'll get into that in the coming lectures as well in terms of memory allocation you have that you have the char as you have before and you can say this is CHR first okay and that is actually this is actually two bytes of memory where in the C++ compiler it's one byte here it is two bytes and again I'll explain that why what what the difference is but it has to do with the termination character then we have our typical short data type, which is also two bytes, and that's an integer. So we can say SRHRT uh, first. And we you've been exposed to that in the C++ course as well. Then you have an int, so int first. And then you also have a float, which is FLT first. And then you have a double you can say double first so here are the primitive data types that you should be familiar with as we go through the semester we're going to use these a little bit less and less they still have some uses but as far as object-oriented programming goes we'll usually use the object or the class object for these data types specifically for double int and uh, char will probably use the string data type so these are the primitive data types. Now the assignment statements that are used is similar to previously. So let's say I want to say double first is equal to um, 3.0 times 4. You'll have the assignment operator here. You have the multiplication symbol and the expression here will assign the result into double first. So that doesn't change in Java and C++, same thing. Okay, so that, that really doesn't change. In that syntax, you should be already familiar with, but I'm just going over it just in case that you forgot. One thing that I will mention is when we, there's a, a is there still a notion of casting here and more explicitly? But with implicit casting, there are a couple of differences in terms of C++ and Java. So 
when I uh, when I do int first is equal to 2.33 in C++ this would implicitly cast the value to a 2 but in Java it actually does not let me do that because there is no sense of implicit casting in terms of turning an int a double to an int so if I try and compile this it says that it's an error possible loss uh, lossy conversion from double to int and it actually marks it as an error not even a warning so you do have to make sure that whatever data type that you are using you are making sure that it is the correct data type there is no implicit casting that happens um, as far as that goes in terms of the values and primitive data types now as I did mention all the mathematical expressions remain the same you have a division multiplication subtraction addition and modulus and we won't I won't go into that because again you should be familiar with this these concepts already so uh, we can skip that part I'm not going to give you a video on that again this is a, a course on object-oriented programming using Java but I'm not teaching you this syntax all the syntactical things in Java so let me let me take this point to introduce you to the newest object that you're going to learn it's the first object that you're going to learn it's called the string class so the string class is going to be a predefined class and it's a, made available to you in in Java and this allows us to store strings of characters so while it was very tedious to store strings of characters in C++ unless you use a string object here we're going to be using the string class and instantiate an object out of that to create a string so very easy um, we can say string right and then we can say um, my first string okay and that in itself will declare a string data what we can say an object type or a reference type of string okay and this allows us to store a string so let me give you an example so my first string oops is equal to hello world and then I can print it print that first string out and for the most part in this class we will be using this string class not I'm not gonna torture you anymore with the char data type as I did with the introduction to C++ because it's not no longer needed anymore but at least you understand that this although it's a different language the string class itself is really an implementation done by the char data type so there you go so you have now hello world and this is a string object that we can use now with this string object comes a lot of functions that we that, that are available to us in methods okay so if I wanted to so with with a string class object once we declare something as a string we have all the methods available to us from that class so for example and we can use the intelligence here so my first string and then if I say dot the dot operator will give me a whole mess of functions that are going to be available to me as part of the package of a string meaning that I can get the length and you see the data type here that's going to return right um, for those that are not returning anything it'll just be a void okay and the one the important ones that I would like you to focus on are length then you have the equals so let me look at that here it is so equals okay and the parameter is an object but you can pass in another string okay and it's going to return a boolean so the way to read this is this is the method name that's available to you the the arguments that you have to pass in and the parameters are defined and then what's after the colon is the return type that is being returned now this equals will will compare one string to another and it's going to return true if the strings match or false if they do not then you also have a two lowercase two uppercase and that will give you back a string data type so it's not going to perform the function and change the string right away 
then you have an uppercase you can also trim so trim will actually remove any spaces to the left and to the right then the other one I, I would like you to be familiar with is the substring as well so we go down and we look at the substring there there are two uh, methods that are being used and this is called a um, overriding a method so here I'm oh, sorry overloading a method so here we have two versions and that's allowed as long as the parameters are different you have one with a begin index and then with begin index and an end index for the parameters and what that allows us to do is we can substring starting at the whatever index I want and then end at any index I want so the only difference is this one will start at an index and then end at the final string and then this one the begin index you can cut it in the middle so if let's say you want to go from index 3 to 10 you would say 3 and then 10 and then that will cut it in the middle this one you can just insinuate you can just put in a 3 and then it'll go from 3 to the end of the string so it all depends on what you want to do and then it's going to return back a string data type okay okay so those are pretty much the ones that you should focus on and then on the next video we'll talk about more more talk a little bit more about the string class